thing. Yes. So welcome to the testing roadmap dev core. Um, today's agenda is, well, let's say all about testing. Um, I'd like to start with a general discussion on, on the uh, testing proposal and, and the testing framework proposal. Then uh, Christoph will show us uh, a work in progress on converting a or doing a doing a test class in with the Kotlin language, so that we can discuss and maybe decide to use Kotlin or not for testing at least. Uh, then the next point is uh, I I, um, I proposed a long term long term strategy and a short term strategy in the in the testing proposal. So I'd like to discuss uh, first the long term strategy and how we can get that up and running. And then uh, to discuss the short-term strategy and where we draw the line in between uh, testing whether an addition works or if a whole feature set works. And in the end, we'll do a quick summa summing up and that will it be for today. So um, I believe you guys made yourself uh, Familiar with the proposals? At least some of you? Yeah, I did. Yes. Do you have any, do you have any uh, notes, thoughts, questions just to start with on the, on the proposal? The, the, the testing proposal, not the testing framework proposal, right? The testing proposal, yes. Um, yeah, I, I think we should we should get to the point as soon as possible where we can at least write some some tests for every new pull request, right? Yes. That is, that is the plan. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. If the, if that's all the, the questions you have, uh, general questions you have, then uh, I believe we we check this one. And uh, I'd like to uh, hand over to Christoph. Maybe you okay. can give us some uh, uh, intro on how Kotlin works for testing, even if it's not yet uh, ready for production. Okay. Can you take over the screen? Yeah, you have to stop sharing. Okay. Start share, stop, sh stop share. Okay. okay, so this is like Ready. one of the, of, the, of the most complex tests that we have. And it, it, it's also what I'm currently working on, the account signing. So basically, this is already Kotlin code but it's basically just Java code converted from Kotlin. And, and the, Java, the Java file, it looked exactly the same. It had a lot of variables for, because there's like the three uh, accounts involved in, 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 in the signing test and, and it's, it, it was really complex to read. So I thought it would be good to have one class that holds all the data for for one for one entity that of of the signing process, so I just so here we have a data class. Basically, that that's that's how you would in in Lombok you would in, in Java you would just use Lombok, and you can just declare a data class with all the fields, and you don't have to set anything. It's and and to string and copy constructor and everything is automatically generated for you. And that's, I think that's um, really useful. So, so basically this, this test, it doesn't work right now, but I, I so the, the, the signed witness two and signed witness three is still in the old style. And signed it with this one, I converted to how, how I want the whole test to look like. So basically, 
I just I just created like the signed witness data class with with the with the signing key, the the witness hash and 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 basically all all the fields that, that were separate. Um, yeah and and then and then I can just instead of always creating it like this, I can just I made a method called signed witness that just calls the the signed witness constructor with with the parameters from this data class. Okay, so and, and the interesting part is at some point the the first test has all has all um, uh, valid signatures. The second test tries to um, test what happens when a signature is not valid, and and that's not possible right now because um, because I create the signature in the data class because I didn't want it duplicated everywhere. But I can just I can just move this here. Then it's then it's just a parameter with a default value, and then in the next test, I can just I can just say make a signed witness with account one and copy all the fields except signature, change the signature to a byte array that's invalid. So I think that that the name parameters and the copy constructors make Kotlin code much more readable than the Java code, and I think that that's, that's especially important for unit tests or for tests in, in general. Okay, and you, you said uh, we, we could get rid of the long box stuff. Yeah, I mean, I mean this, this data class here is basically something, I mean, we don't use Lombok in the unit tests right now. So basically we use, we could, we could, we could get rid of Lombok if we used Kotlin for, for production code. I mean, for yeah, example, if, if, if we take the, okay, maybe that's not the best example, but we, we do have a lot of, we do have a lot of classes that are basically just beans. And then, then we could get rid of Lombok and I, I mean, People say Kotlin is complicated. I think that that Lombok is also really complicated. And if, if I would decide between Kotlin and Lombok, I would, yeah. I mean, it, it, and Lombok is also pretty exotic in, in my opinion. But anyway, right now we're talking about tests. Um, may I jump in here? Uh, I mean, there's one uh, thing with, uh, with, with Lombok, which is, I think, a strong uh, reason why we should try to get rid of it long term. Uh, because of security, I mean, it's using um, uh, aspect uh, as far as I know, aspect oriented in programming to get all this done, and I think that's probably more risky, like like what we want to have. Uh, nobody, oh, um, most people don't really know what's going on behind the scenes with Lombok, and it's uh, yeah. And I think okay. we should oh. be more conservative. With I wouldn't have added any more um, after I, I knew that how it also uh, Crispin. Beams told me once that it's using AOL and so, and that was kind of uh, yeah, a risky decision at the end. I think that's also a good point, but that, I think for that point we should probably that, that's probably when we start using if if we ever start using Kotlin in production. I, but I think for using for unit tests now is maybe a good idea because I mean. The unit tests that we have right now, they are not really very readable. So it's, I think most, most of, in, in, in a pretty short time frame, most of the unit, if we are successful, most of the unit tests will be new unit tests or rewritten unit tests. And, I, and so I think that writing that in Kotlin, it's, it's just, I think a unit test, for me, unit test is like is like documentation also. So if it's just a bit easier to read with less boilerplate, that, that's for me. That's a good reason for me to use Kotlin. Yeah, of course. If you if you remove boilerplate code, it's it's more readable. Uh, it doesn't matter what language you have. Yeah. 
yeah, I mean that that that's that's basically the 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 test that I'm working on right now, and I think that once once I have, I mean, in in the end, all this private var stuff will be gone, and there will be just there will be just um, three accounts, and if I want to change something, I can just use the copy constructor, and it's it's just. I mean, I, I would not know of a way how to write this test in a, in this readable way in, in Java. It's it's just not possible. Okay, so what uh, what you're saying is you, you could reduce the, the the number of the lines of codes uh, necessary for the very same tests by let's say fifty percent or thirty seventy. I mean, I mean, it's hard to say because. Rewriting the, the, these tests, it should have, it needs to be rewritten if, even if we re rewrite it in in Java. But so it it can be simplified also in Java, but it but not in this. Basically, without the copy constructor, without the name parameters, I can just say, okay, give me the same thing, but with this, and that's that's something that you need very often in in Kotlin, and it's uh, in tests, and it's also not not about number of lines for me. It's about how how this reads because I mean in the old test you need it all in separate variables because because you have to in, in tests you always you always build up the, almost the same structure with just one difference and yeah. and this copy constructor basically tells me it's exactly like like in the like account one but with this and that's 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 just a, a really nice way to write it. And yeah, it's, it's, it's more readable. Yeah, you have less variables, you have uh, less lines of code you have to be familiar with, and, and so and you can yeah. spot the, the error or the feature uh, faster. And even, and even with the variables, if you look at this, if, if you look at the lines below, you, you just don't know. You have to say, okay, okay this is account two, signature two, signature two. So it's like you have to, if, 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 I, if I change like this, to three, I mean, nobody notices, right? Okay, yeah, so what you're saying is in, in this very example, the, the line 128 is, is the, the, the Kotlin way to do it. And yeah. the lines below is the, the traditional Java way and you just uh, yeah. convert it. That's, that's, so that's basically, it that's basically what the automatic translation from Java okay, to Kotlin yeah, yeah. And then And then I wanted to change the style and, and basically, Introduce a data class that holds yeah. all the data for one one of so and, and I mean I could do it in Java then then this would maybe be a Lombok class I don't know but I would not have the copy constructor and I would not so, so if 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 I use the copy constructor that Lombok gives me I, I can probably also copy this but I don't have a name parameter because Java doesn't have that yeah and I also and I also can say normally please. Uh, calculate the signature automatically, but you can also override it because I made because I moved it from from a field to a default parameter. Okay, so I think yes. It's, yes, please go on. I think that's just. I mean, that's very simple Kotlin features, and I think that's that's features that we can start using in tests, and when people like it and grow more familiar with it, we can. Use more com complex features. I mean, all, all the all the Java eight stream API stuff has much shorter and nicer equivalents in Kotlin, and it's yeah. so basically it's just. I think I think using it in tests is a good way to get our feedback, and then and then we can see. Uh, let, let me just uh, backtrack to the question I asked you. What, what do you think is, is possible to save on, in, in plain lines of code? And we already discussed if you have uh, okay. less, uh, less lines of code, you, you can uh, quicker get the whole picture. And, and so sure. there's less complexity. What do you think we can, we can save with, with, with Kotlin versus Java? I think that it's, it's as for me, it's always about 50%. Fifty percent is a number, and and, and I and I and I also I mean you also the Kotlin lines they're just shorter <laughs> to read, 
And and for and like I said, I mean, if I just change this to a three, yeah. Yeah. nobody will notice it. So yeah. because you have to, you have to, when you scan the Java code, you have to, you have to say, okay, what's what's exactly the difference be between line one hundred and fourteen and one hundred and fifteen? I mean, it's very hard to read because of the repetition. And so basically, you you, I, I think that if you read a test and all the and all the things that you read is really relevant. Then it's relaxing to read, but if you have some lines where it's just boilerplate, I think the boilerplate lines they are really bad for your concentration. Yeah, and, and the boilerplate lines is the is the stuff where you overlook errors yeah. and stuff. Yes, of course. So, because you so it's not only less lines. On. It's I think it's easier to write tests where every line is really relevant. Yeah. To, to the understanding, not 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 to the running, to the understanding of the test. Yeah. That, that's uh, why. I could show you how to achieve like the same readability as you got in line 128 in two lines in Java. Okay. Yeah. So, but maybe I'll, I'll show it a bit later when I will present the integration tests if we if we get to that part. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds great. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Christoph. Uh, you I I believe uh, I believe we we got a picture on on what the difference is between Java and Kotlin and how we can maybe um, uh, get better code and more efficient code out of it, more readable code out of it. Uh, the 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 strategy I believe we we can go maybe we can agree on is that we can use Kotlin at least for some tests and then see how it, how it goes and uh, maybe decide then if we want Kotlin more prominently in BISC or not. Yeah. If, if you, uh, are there, every, uh, are there any um, uh, questions or, or thoughts on, on this from, from the audience? Is there a way to convert back from Kotlin to Java as well in the IDE? No. I mean, you can convert from Kotlin to bytecode and from bytecode to Java, but I think you don't want to do that for tests because tests are very, very specific. Yeah, sure. yeah. But, yeah. but also, I mean, you know, I think tests should be really small. So I think once you have figured out how to test something, that, that's, the, that's the most, that's the hardest part of it. So rewriting, is a, and, and also anytime you rewrite a test, you can make it a bit better. So. If, if if it's just it, you can probably convert it to Java from Kotlin in twenty yeah, minutes. No, no, yeah, sure, no, it should because be most of it is thinking. Uh, no, it just I think we have to be aware. Even if we start now just with a few classes, then it becomes twenty, thirty, fifty, hundred classes. Uh, it's a it's a decision, but we cannot revert easily later. When we want to revert it, it will have a big price, uh, or yeah. Yeah. So we have to be sure if we really want this and one when we want to do this. Yeah, but the other way around is the same thing. So if we if we create classes in Java and then want to use Kotlin for for whatever reason, um, you can convert them. Yes, but you then have uh, Java in uh, Kotlin version, but it's not Kotlin code; it's Java code converted to Kotlin. So yeah. But I mean, Java is the, is the standard what we have now at the end. Uh, yes, so it, yes, it, yes. It, I mean, the changes, yeah. Uh, uh, the, the thing uh, we are suggesting is, I believe, maybe I can find a few lines to, to, to say this more prominently. If we, we, we try to use Kotlin for tests, uh, if we feel that we can be more productive and uh, get more readable tests uh, by using Kotlin, then we have succeeded. If we uh, do not feel that way, we stay with Java and uh, get rid of Kotlin eventually, and and that's it. But if we if we uh, feel that Kotlin is maybe the way to go, then we shouldn't miss it because uh, as I uh, personally uh, have uh, gotten to know Kotlin is that you you can write more more code, more functional code in less time with uh, a lot less boilerplate code and that is alone a thing uh, that I would give a chance, at least a chance. So 
Well, that's it. That's that's the that's the reason I believe we should we should uh, try Kotlin for tests. Uh, I just want to say that uh, to write something efficiently in any language, you need to know that language well. So I don't. I don't think I could write efficient language, efficient Kotlin tests without knowing Kotlin, which I don't right now. And I don't know how many of you guys know it, but if like there is only one or two people that know Kotlin, uh, I don't see other developers writing tests in Kotlin. Yeah, and if, that's, that's yeah, an important what we, point. What we, had, what we had before is we had. No developers writing tests at all. So I mean, yeah, no, but I, I mean, when, I you, and, and when you write a test, usually you get, you, you look at the most similar test, you, you you look at a test that tests something similar, and if the test is in Java, then you use the Java code. If the test is in Kotlin, and and basically, I mean, you can just write your test in Java. <laughs> Nobody is forcing you to write the test in Kotlin. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah, I think it's just a point. I mean. So uh, yeah, we should evaluate how many uh, developers are familiar with Kotlin, also who could already write now Kotlin uh, code, and who how many would to basically need to learn it to be effective, even if it's easy to learn, but it takes some uh, effort and some time. And because I mean the the review process will be different. Like I myself, when I saw the Kotlin code, I clicked over. I would need to learn Kotlin first to meaningful meaningfully review and that will be other developers as well. So when it would turn out that you and Florian are the only guys who are really familiar with Kotlin, basically either everybody is forced to learn it to be able to review because it shouldn't be that only two people are cross reviewing each other or yeah, um, yeah, but would that, be not that, a good situation. That's an interesting point, but, but the, if, you, if, you, if you take a look at this signed witness service test, I think if you only know Java and not Kotlin, then the Kotlin version is still easier to read than the old Java version because... Yeah, so for me, as non-Kotlin uh, no <laughs> user, the method with copy and then the, uh, the, this extra uh, overwritten um, parameter was not what, completely what do you think? clear. Oh, sorry. What do you I, think does it do? It's a copy construct. Yeah, I mean, sure, you can, you can get that. It's not hard. I just say, I think to meaningfully review things and there will be more... Uh, yeah, some more advanced um, language features and so uh, it will take some time. So, and I tried it myself uh, with the Netlayer library. Once there was some issue and I, I tried to look myself into it because at this time nobody had time. And I thought, no, I cannot do this because uh, I would need a few days at least to learn Kotlin first. And that's not a big problem. I just want to point out that we should be clear at the current developer community what we have and maybe everybody uh, Witz is here, maybe he can add uh, some input if he's familiar with Kotlin. Uh, Battle of Wizard, I think he's familiar with Kotlin, uh, even if he didn't thought that it's a good uh, moment to, to edit now. And Christoph and his crew, are, maybe I'll ping them if, they, if they're available, it would be interesting to hear, hear their statements as well. Yeah. Um I, I believe uh, I still believe we we can uh, create at least a, a, a few uh, Kotlin tests, and then we can uh, evaluate. Let's 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 let people look at it and say, uh, well, uh, do you understand what the test means? And if it's okay, then it's okay. And we can decide that there will be a proposal uh, coming up. I don't know in a month or so uh, whether we should use Kotlin or not, and there will be more discussion about it, of course. But uh, we believe that uh, for for the, the for upping the testing coverage, we can easily create some examples of how to use Kotlin. Maybe, just maybe, people will see well that's maybe the better choice and and uh, the more efficient choice. Once you had your one or two or three days uh, 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 going uh, to learn Kotlin, uh, but then. Every class you write takes half of your time, so maybe maybe it pays off, maybe it does not, and that is the the I'm, reason. I'm I'm pretty sure that it's a, it's a better language and probably pays off. All as just uh, would like to see a little bit how is the current from our develop 
us uh, the coverage basically and and what they think are like i mean devin is here so maybe devin and wits you can um add your comments what do you think about it and if you're familiar with kotlin and i post i posted christoph and sq as well i'm not sure if they can uh christoph cannot join and the school is probably not online uh he's on holiday uh but i think it's important to get uh, the voice of every other developers as well on such important topic i mean let let me let me say something about this because even even if you know java maybe you don't know how to write an efficient unit test in java so even then you would need to learn something new even then you would probably need to take a look at a similar test and say okay why is it done this way so you have you have a mocking library i mean testing is hard so that that's if you want good testing there's a lot to learn for everybody and and to doing it in kotlin actually makes it easier Yeah, I believe we, we can uh, leave the discussion as it is now. I have uh, noted that we will uh, do a, a kind of a poll and see how people are familiar with Kotlin and uh, figure out how we proceed on the Kotlin matter uh, offline or in a, in a future dev car. Uh, but I believe, uh, Christoph, if you if you stay uh, uh on the topic on, on, on creating tests in Kotlin, we have uh, something to look at and we can decide on this basis. Okay. Uh, and I believe that Christopher alone is not able to, to do uh, hundreds of testing classes within a month uh, to use, or, or do you? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Kotlin, Kotlin is very effective, yeah. yeah, yeah no. you know. um, uh, uh, so we, we have a couple of classes and, and uh, we can take them and, and evaluate if we want Kotlin or not. Yeah, okay, so that's uh, on the topic of Kotlin. You will not hear about, uh, hear about Kotlin anymore in this dev core, I believe. Um, are there any other thoughts on, on, uh, on the, on the uh, uh, proposals and, and on, the, on the goals we have uh, defined? For, uh, I have uh, sketched for, for, the, for the proposal. Uh, if there are no questions, we'll, uh, I want to go on to the to the long term strategy and discuss how we get that started and if there is any anything unsettling about it. Are there any questions uh, regarding the general discussion? No questions. No? Okay. Okay. Then I checked it off. So um, for the uh, well, I actually. Uh, have to just quickly. Uh, I have created uh, uh, some uh, approaches, uh, proposals uh, for short term and long term. The short term uh, proposal is about uh, getting getting an effect in the rather short term, so that we can. Um, uh, have have testing on our side and uh, the testing helps us getting things done. Uh, I propose to to create an automated test framework uh, that spins up a small BISC peer-to-peer network. And uh, so with anything you need, there is an Alice, there's a Bob, there's an arbitrator, a seed node, a Bitcoin node, and so on. Um, if we, uh, and, and every time uh, our Travis is going to do a test run. It fires up the whole small peer-to-peer -peer network of BISC and, and sees if things still work. Um, there is an obvious uh, a pro uh, advantage to this approach, of course, uh, because we, we can automatically see if uh, things do still work and maybe we can reduce manual release testing uh, release in, in parenthesis. Um, if we have this, uh, if we can uh, save time on manual release testing, we can use the resources we have uh, in other ways. And another uh, advantage is that we can uh, somehow streamline the, the testing procedures in a way that uh, 
Firstly, a reviewer is not has not to do uh, the whole uh, manual release testing thing for every single uh, pull request that is out there, and it's very time consuming. Uh, secondly, um, a developer sees well uh, if this whole big integration test thing uh, says well my pull request is fine, uh, the developer can uh, submit it. Uh, with a with a, a clean slate to the to, to be a pull request to be merged, and of course, uh, if you have a, a a very new developer that is uh, just starting out and maybe sees in the issue list some some minor issue with the with the GUI, uh, where there is some uh, I don't know pop up uh, loop or something like this, it does not have to do the whole setup of the of the uh, Basic development framework just to fix this very small little um, thing in order to, to get started with the whole stuff. Um, uh, and now it's the time I, I ask you for, for your thoughts on, on this short term strategy. Uh, what do you think about uh, having this integration test that uh, simulates a whole uh, peer to peer network and and tries to to do some some trades and some arbitration cases and so on uh, would this be uh, would this be good for BISC to do it in an automatic way or should we uh, in, uh, uh, spend our resources elsewhere uh, well i don't see uh, any tools for integration testing like end to end testing with the Java client, uh, so to click through the GUI. Uh, I, if we would have API, then we testing on the API level, so we could test the trade protocol, uh, which would be very useful. But still, uh, I don't think we could test the GUI itself in the end-to-end -end manner. Yes, agreed. Uh, but uh, uh, Bernard, as you have you created the API, so there is some 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 uh, 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 BISC API there. Is it in the core package? I don't know. Where you where you can uh, weave in and and use it to to do all BISC can do without the GUI, isn't there? Uh, it's not merged yet, so it's like a big thing that is under underway. Uh, but with that API, doing uh, the HTTP request, you could do the whole trade, set up the uh, account, uh, the payment accounts, uh, post and offer, list offers, uh, take an offer, mark offer as paid, uh, mark that the tr funds have been received, and then withdraw uh, to to the wallet and check if the balance in the wallet uh, is okay. So. Uh, so this trade level stuff, that, which is I think like the most important, that is, this thing yes. should be automated and it must work. Could be. Uh, so my API would be a really good match for those tests. And actually, I do have tests like that already uh, on the branch. Uh, but uh, that the interface for those tests would be the HTTP API. And uh, we would still have to have manual tests of the UI. Uh, okay. I mean, that's one possibility, but, <clears throat> but uh, that only works pretty good when, when we have a lot of code shared between API and the rest of the app. And, and if we have, then, then the, I mean, the API will probably not call any, any desktop classes. So I think. The API should just be a small wrapper around uh, around the core module, right? And yes, I do. That's what I would love. And if we have that, then we can then we can just use then we can just use Java calls to the core API without doing any HTTP. It's just we can just spin up the tests and then do Java calls to the to the and and I think that 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 API tests. I mean. Not HTTP API, but really the Java API tests for the core module. That that's something that's really important. And 
also, I think we should not only have the integration test part of it, but we should also have some kind of a functional test that don't that doesn't really do much of TCP IP and Tor, but it's really fast. So uh, we have we have a, a simulated connection that and the P2P network running on a, on a, on a like like in in one in one virtual machine, spin up five instances to, to talk about the peer to peer network and 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 use that for functional tests or unit tests of, of, the, of, of the core module. And maybe with the same API, have a different mode how to run the test in, 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 in the real Tor environment with, with different VMs. Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Bernard, is, uh, you, you tried to, to weave your HTTP API into the into, into BISC somehow. Where, where is the interface between uh, BISC and your API? Is it the core module somewhere? Oh. Oh. Mm, well, the, a, a, the HTTP API tries to be a wrapper for, for like the core uh, elements like uh, trade manager or open offer manager, something like that. Uh, so I'm trying to do as little on the API level. Okay. Of course, uh, currently, uh, in current state, the mm, the way that the, the code is written is very much tied to the UI, and a lot of logic happens in the UI, which should be refactored. Uh, so I have to mimic uh, some of that code that is in the UI and and I keep it on in the API level, but I would like to ideally move, refactor the core, so the uh, API doesn't have to do like anything apart from just uh, passing the, just tran translate the HTTP uh, call into like Java call to specific method on some manager and just then translate the results back. To so uh, I, I understand that you, you see a way that we can use the, the core API, so the trade manager and the open offer manager and uh, stuff like this to, to get, this, uh, to get uh, uh, some integration tests running up and running that where you can uh, create an offer and accept an offer and see if, the, if everything works. Uh, well, mm, that's what I uh, do right now. I'm spinning separate Docker containers, so they work like separate computers, uh, and they talk to each other using uh, mm, our peer-to-peer -peer network. Uh, and this is very good for like real end-to-end -end tests, and because there was like n no way for now uh, to the uh, Spin up programmatically uh, instances and stop them uh, because I think this is what uh, Christoph is uh, proposing. So that we, from the test, we programmatically on the same machine just spin up two instances of disk and programmatically drive them. So I don't think there is now any way, any easy way. Yeah, ideally we could do that, but. Too much tango for now, and I think that the API is the easiest way to achieve programmatic yeah. access. But, but the API tests, I mean, they're really slow. If 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 one if one test takes like fifty seconds and we have 100, 100, 100 tests, then it's like yeah, then it runs for an hour. Yeah, that's not feasible. Yeah. Uh, but we can we, yeah. we can uh, uh, do not use Tor, and then it's much faster, I think. Yeah, but, but, but my, my, my proposal was, maybe, and maybe that's in addition to the other thing, but my proposal was to, to spin up multiple instances in, in one Java virtual machine, like in, in like yeah. seconds. So oh, oh in this, okay. I mean, yeah, but, you know, the, but the because we, we have a lot peer, of peer, You will still have peer to uh, peer uh, communication uh, between seed node and and two instances like Bob and Alice, and it, this is the this, uh, stuff that takes time. It's not that 
Docker is slow and starting the instance is slow because it's a separate container. No, 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 yeah, no, no, no. It's slow because the disk itself is slow. Yeah, I mean, we will see. Because we can, if, if we do it in like one virtual machine, in like one JVM, then we can decide what part of the communication we want to mock. And and we can also make that programmatically and say, okay, now let's now let's run the, the very fastest version of it because I'm still developing and I want to get feedback on my changes. And then on CI, we run the the version that goes much deeper in its round trip. I don't know, but it's if it's all Java code, it's all very configurable. Maybe well, yes. Yes, go on. You go ahead. So Bernard, what you're saying is that uh, you, for your HTTP API to be used for uh, such a level of integration, high level of integration test, you had to uh, create, recreate some logic that uh, originally has been in the in the in the GUI uh, to get the whole thing up and running. Is this correct? Mm, yes, like for example, some uh, validations of the. You are uh, of the offer payload they, they happen in the UI uh, okay. but you know th that's like uh, current state of this initial uh, API um, development and I think that ideally we should uh, refactor the core uh, so that uh, API doesn't have to do any logic apart from just translating the data structures. Do you see a way to uh, uh, spin up tests only by using the Java Core API? Now, short term, without much uh, hustle, that we can at least get uh, some green lights on if the, if the code still works or not? Uh, I don't think so. Like okay. uh, to test it end to end, I don't see, I don't see an easy way because uh, stuff is like really complex. Uh, what, uh, the, the whole startup process. The, it, this is really complicated, and re for me, it was really the only feas feasible way to just have the machine started as a, as it starts right now uh and uh, and then just have the some a, uh, programmatic access to it and the the api was like best best uh, the thing that that allowed that but uh i don't i really would <laughs> wouldn't do it that way uh, having what christoph is proposing that would be ideal but I don't see it uh, too feasible. Mm. Okay, so uh, one way is to use your API to do uh, to get a, a fast and short-term uh, uh, tests up and running uh, uh, that test the whole thing end to end. Because you already put some effort into creating your HTTP API and uh, the uh, the stuff that is necessary to get. This, the, the thing up and running. Well, so with the with the API, uh, the hardest part is this. I think the first uh, the first pull request that I have created because it contains all the dependencies. All the dependencies I relate are related to the REST uh, framework, uh, the JAXRS, and uh, this. Mm, poses like the greatest threats and concerns that uh, maintainers have right now and once that's done then like subsequent uh, uh, changes uh, are small and uh, there would be some refactoring uh, for the uh, trade manager and offer manager 
uh, required, but I think that's uh, that shouldn't take too much time. Um, uh, Bernard, would you would you care showing us what you what you already did uh, uh, testing wise with your API? Sure, sure. So please, please go on share your screen. Okay, so there is, a, a, to sum this up, uh, there is no easy way to test the GUI for now or without much effort. And there is no easy way, fast way to get the API merged into the project because there are, of course, security concerns. Um, yet, it is not possible to test the core Java API, uh, to use the core Java API to uh, spin up such tests because some of the logic is in the GUI or in the HTTPS, uh, HTTP API. So uh, it, would it be, would we, maybe, would it be feasible to, to, ex, to do uh, some refactoring first so that we can uh, remove logic from the API or the GUI or something like this to get the whole thing up and running? Yeah, I think so. I think that the, that refactoring should be the part of accepting like, uh, subsequent PRs. Can you see my screen, guys? Um, I do not. You're viewing no. Bernard's screen. It's black for me. Yeah, it's just a black screen. Oh. Hmm. Okay, just a second. Uh, maybe I'll try to join uh, from because I'm on the uh, different uh, browser, maybe I'll try it from... The Brave browser is having some issues sometimes. Uh, so just a second, I'll try to uh, join from, um, from my other browser. Okay. Uh, In the meantime, Christoph, do you think it's... Uh, can we can we do... Uh... Can we find the, the, the missing parts? Uh, can we refactor the missing parts for such an integration testing into the Java uh, API, the core API? Would I mean, this, this be a good, a good way to, to start things up? You know, basically, we, we, always, we always have to use the core API for our tests because even if we, even if we have in the HTTP API, some some data that some some code that's that's needed. It, it doesn't it doesn't it then it only tests the HTTP API. It just because the only part it can only it, it can only test the part of the desktop app that's shared between the HTTP API and and desktop. So just just using normal JVM tests for the core API is for me still the the best way, but 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 I know that it's it's a bit hard because uh, we have a lot of uh, of shared global state. So if you just want if you want in one JVM to run multiple instances, I mean that's then you have to get rid of of a lot of the static data that we have. But but I think that's the that's the main problem. And that's the way uh, to go. And it's also the way to go. Can you see my screen, guys? Yeah, yes, no. yes. Okay, so uh, uh, as you can see in this uh, uh, changes history, there is this minimal API, uh, uh, security framework, uh, API over Tor, and then I've got uh, subsequent like commits, which uh, right now, each is on separate, uh, separate branch, and I would like to create separate PRs once this minimal is accepted. Uh, so this commit uh, contains changes with the payment account only. Uh, another with arbitrator management that's required mostly for for the tests. Uh, creating and taking offer, and then there is. Uh, other one for the uh, like 
completing the trade. So I think that with each of those uh, mm, each of those commits uh, and separate pull requests, uh, apart from like uh, getting the exist adding wrapper, uh, I would also include the refactoring of existing core modules, and I think that some uh, stuff already is being modified. Yeah. Bernard, would you please just focus on, on your, your test cases so that we can see how you, you do the, the uh, end to, somewhat end-to-end -end tests? Yeah, okay, okay. I just wanted to just mention how I how we would see how we could pro progress with the um, getting uh, functionalities into API and uh, together with refactoring of some core. Uh, yeah. So okay. Okay. Uh, now, I, I, I will schedule a, a known uh, dev core for your API in the future. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just okay. please uh, show us the stuff. Uh, okay. So. Um, uh, first of all, we have to build the uh, containers uh, for the uh, for the API in headless mode. So there is a, a Docker image a descriptor for the Docker container uh, here. Uh, with Docker Compose, you can start. Um, Bob, Alice, uh, Seed Node, Bitcoin Node, and Arbitrator. Uh, if you want to do like manual tests and manual interaction, uh, and uh, once you build the containers, you can uh, run the tests. And this is sample test that uh, mm, spins up. Uh, here you got the uh, configuration of the containers. So this is uh, declarative. You just declare that the, this is going to be uh, Alice. And here is my wrapper for, uh, basically you use our client API to define uh, what container name it should have, from what image it should, uh, what Docker image it should use what comments should be used to start it, and some port bindings, waiting strategies, stuff like that. And then you just, uh, you can annotate your tests that they should, for example, happen in sequence. This is good for, it's not good for unit tests, but those are end-to-end -end tests actually. So to save time, uh, I execute them in certain order. For example, I need to, uh, I can test, uh, do the test, but uh, mm, try to do some uh, some calls that should not change the any the state of the network or any internal state in the uh, uh, applications. Uh, so that's why I run them first, and only afterwards I mm, do tests that modify some state. So uh, that's cool. And uh, okay, let's look how how this test uh, create offer no arbitrator accepted. It should return status uh, 422. Uh, so, so I, what, I what you are doing is uh, so, uh, sorry. Uh, what you are doing is you you you're starting up a whole uh, BISC network, a small BISC network with. Uh, I believe I saw Alice and Bob and an arbitrator and and a C note or something like yeah, this. Exactly. Uh, the Bitcoin note. Mm -hmm. And so you, you have a you have the whole network simulated and then you select either Alice or Bob or something like this and say to them, Well, start a trade, for example. Uh, and yeah, exactly. Then you, and then you say, Bob, well accept the trade that Alice just published and, and you can see if it works. Yeah, so here I try to create offer uh, and this, so this is what I'm trying to do. First part uh, in the name of the test. Second part of the name uh, is like the conditions or a scenario. So for example, uh, no arbitrator has been 
uh, selected by uh, by this client. Uh, I think that here I'm using uh, create offer template, and here. Uh, Yeah, so I create offers uh, against uh, Alice client. So I'm using Alice port of the um, of its API to, to communicate with Alice. Um, okay, so uh, so that we don't get lost in in, in uh, too uh, many details, uh, you are doing end-to-end -end integration testing with your API. Yeah, exactly. So I'm sending a request to Alice uh, to create an offer. And uh, well, this test actually should not change any state of the network or Alice. It should just return me uh, information that something is not set up properly. For example, I have not selected arbitrator. So it yeah. returns me appropriate status code. Uh, but later on, uh, uh, create offer happy path. There should be something like this. Um, amount to hide. Okay. Uh, okay. So this test tries to create offer with a valid payload and has sufficient funds, and so it should return me the offer. So. Uh, yeah, so here is the part that does the uh, the initial request to create the offer. It should, re uh, now it makes assertions on the response. And yeah, and then like there is like separate, separate test that checks if, um, if this offer is available on the offer list. So here I'm using the same um, node. I'm using the Alice port, but I could use also the um, Bob's. So uh, another container, so another uh, BISC client uh, to see if the offer has been propagated. And I think this is done uh, in the tests, uh, yeah, with the take offer. Yeah, and the take offer actually is using always the other guy, so it is going to use yeah the Bob port because yeah. the Alice exposes like on one port and the Bob exposes the API on another port. So that if 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 there is you you're basically simulating a whole uh, trade uh, between Alice and Bob, and yes. you you would uh, check if there is something wrong in let's say the core or the peer to peer network because it just doesn't simple it, it doesn't work and you get an error yes basically uh, one of those tests uh, at some point uh, well not even not one at least one would fail most probably if we would have problem creating offers uh, let's see there are like really many tests uh, so those are create offer and then there is uh, there are many tests for taking the offer, so most probably all of them would fail, but that's fine. We just want to have everything in green uh, yeah. with the end-to-end, -end. Yeah. like the whole flow must work. Okay. And, and... Yeah, any questions from anyone, guys? I think that it would be wonderful if we could uh, sort of um, uh, divide uh, parts of BISCs, for example, to have like one module for just the peer-to-peer -peer communication. And it doesn't matter what kind of messages are being sent, if it's a trade messages or some completely custom messages, just some... Uh, Mm, a module just for communication and then just do integration tests that are just sending sending those messages uh, that would be wonderful but I, I don't think that uh, that is feasible in any foreseeable future 
uh, to to bring that kind of uh, loose coupling into into this. And I think that we should um, first have tests that uh, give um, test end to end, and then try going into details. Uh, if we would start a new project, then probably following the pyramid of the tests would be cool to have like tons of unit tests, then a bit less, but still many integration tests that have some sort of isolation. And then like very few tests, but, but that's like at least the happy path of the end to end. But in this position where we have already working product, I think uh, starting with end to end tests, since it is feasible, that would be awesome. And then maybe Mm, drilling down uh, with integration tests that have some uh, stage of isolation uh, and down to unit tests, that would be good. But I think that starting with end-to-end -end would be uh, optional, uh, uh, op mm, optimal. Okay, thank you, Bernard. That's quite impressive. Yeah, okay. So, I'm, I'm, well, I believe we have to do some offline discussion on how to get end-to-end uh, -end integration testing up and running. It's, it's, it's not as easy as, as, yeah, well, we knew it is not easy, but it seems there is a lot more to it than meets the eye at first glance. Uh, I, I would uh, suggest we, we talk about uh, how we can get this end-to-end -end testing live offline and see how we can, we can create the tools we need for that. Um, well, uh, I'd like to, to close the, the short time strategy stuff. I think we agreed on that it would be great to have the green light, whether a pull request or a release is at least there is no major fault in it and everything works as it, as it did before. Uh, although we, we might get some errors and the errors may say, well, uh, I don't know what happened, but it just doesn't work. And uh, for short term strategy, I think that is uh, good enough uh, so that we can see, well, there is an issue and we do not uh, merge some some forty pull request into the into the master branch. Yes, uh, I like to proceed now with the uh, the long term strategy, uh, and as you can see here on the, on the right hand side, uh, this is rather sketchy. Um, I'd like to hear. I'd like to discuss a bit about uh, how 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 fine grained we should. Uh, do unit te uh, testing. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Is there, is there some some reference what unit testing is and what integration testing is? And maybe we should uh, somehow uh, establish a, a common ground on, on what the, the, the words mean. Uh, but uh, I'd like to discuss what uh, what approach we should we should do. I I sketched it here in three categories, full the test, test driven developments versus feature tests versus testing if we add two and two, if it is three or four. Uh, in, in the, in the, uh, in the uh, because uh, in the state we are currently, if we, if we enforce uh, that every pull request has to uh, test its changes, might be, uh, difficult, and there are three reasons. Uh, maybe the pull request introduces or fixes something that is desperately needed to, to be fixed. Uh, yet there are no unit tests or any tests for that matter in place before. What should we do? Should we uh, postpone the, the fix we need so desperately uh, until there is a test uh, coverage there? Uh, second second uh, thing is if we if we change something in the in the let's say heart of BISC, uh, 
let's say something in the peer-to-peer -peer network, uh, optimization in communications and so on. If uh, we wanted to test this without there being any tests in place before, uh, it, it's, it, it's, it's basically you have to create tests to test everything. There is no slow start if you have to touch the heart of BISC. And of course, the last thing, uh, what, what about corner cases? Should we test them uh, extensively or should we focus on a good testing coverage but not the 100% testing coverage because the last 20% uh, always takes 80% of the time? So uh, what do you think, guys? Uh, I think that the corner cases are the most important to test. Okay. I, I mean, I think that, and, and, and you're, so, so but, but usually what, what a good rule of thumb has always been for me, uh, the, the person who writes the code, writes as many tests as he needs to, to feel safe about it. And also, and, and maybe also the, the reviewer, like, the re reviewer can say, okay, we need more tests to, to get this approved. And then for everything that ever breaks in production, you have to write a test. So any, any, anything that can go, that, that we know did go wrong at one point, then needs to be a test for that. So, so basically you don't need tests for every feature, but you need tests for every bug. Okay, that sounds interesting. It's quite, quite a nice idea, I think. Yes, yeah, I agree. But you must understand that uh, this contradicts with this. Uh, mm, which one was it? Yeah. So the the uh, the PR requires uh, fixes some critical issue, right? And we desperately need it. So, so we know that there is an issue. So we found the bug already. We're doing a quick fix. So should we now create the tests? I mean, just, just, just some things about it. To really be sure that you, that you found the real bug, you first need to reproduce the bug by writing the failing unit test or failing integration test. Uh, sorry, when I jump in, I think that's not wrong. At least I, as you know, I'm not a big tester and I worked five years without this and it's a working uh, productive uh, application without any major tests, after, uh, any major uh, bugs. So I just like I did smaller fixes uh, over the last weeks. I just yeah, run the application, reproduce the stuff in a way that I can see, okay, here's the problem and then I fix it. And it's a different style of testing maybe in a way, but, um, and I don't want to be against this testing. Of course, we need to get there. It's just that especially the difficult stuff is very difficult to test. Also those which are related to weird circumstances from, uh, from timing, especially, uh, you don't get the, the response from the peer-to-peer -peer network because uh, you got a timeout because something else was consuming too much resources or whatever how to test this. I mean, that's, it can be, everything can be done. It's just when the test takes then one month to write and the normal fix takes one hour. I'm not sure what's the trade off. That's a little bit the difficult thing. And we must not forget, I mean, we have a much, much, the biggest problem in BISC is when we don't get the new trade protocol done in the next half year, we are on high risk that they shut us down basically. So we have, we must not forget that this is the biggest danger and not, that our bugs are eating at us because it works actually pretty stable. I mean, there are bugs, of course, but there are no major bugs and no major problems at the end. I mean, of course, I'm not to say that we need to improve everything. Just want to keep the the um, um, the view a little bit from yeah from further away that it doesn't help you when we are now getting super strong and getting stuff tested which actually works in production which is just have not test coverage and in the meantime uh, the regulators are stopping this when they're attacking the arbitrators or so yeah i mean my foot, if it doesn't break then we doesn't need tests but my suggestion is if it breaks in production it needs a test and and basically yeah but <laughs> i said i 
I mean, there was one issue which was just merged there, which was about uh, why startup was uh, taking very long and often you didn't, didn't get their BSQ uh, um, blocks and so on. And um, the reason was that uh, when you were not connected since a while, you got too many trade uh, statistic objects and the way how it was processed was not optimized. So that could take, um, it was not a user thread, so that could take a lot of resources for a minute. In the meantime, you lost then the connections and that's why everything was slow and instable. How to test this? I mean, that's not, the fix was not hard. It was basically optimization from this code. Then it was instead of one minute, uh, 50 milliseconds and the problem is gone, but how to test it? No clue so, how to so test it, at least. It what what you're saying time. is uh, that the, the real issue with testing such issues as you just described uh, is to recreate uh, the network status so that the issue occurs. Yeah, and, not, yeah, and all, not, not only the peer-to-peer -peer network, the Bitcoin network and the DAO, because all three to play together yeah. and all three are heavy and are influencing each other. And those are actually the critical stuff. These problems with this, Unstability at startup we have since months. Nobody works on it. Nobody fixed it. Every new user gets annoyed because often you need to restart and you don't get connected at all. And I so those are the really hurting things what need to be fixed. Other small vendors, whatever. Yeah, I mean, we should have other bugs as well which should be fixed. But those are really the critical stuff because all the easy stuff got fixed any all the time. I mean, when I was. When it was a bug and I saw it and could fix it quickly, it was easy to fix. Another open bug, for instance, is that sometimes the uh, trade messages doesn't arrive or that, um, that I don't know what's the reason, but sometimes people have um, also the, the publishing of their, <coughs> or the creation of their, um, of their trade uh, um, transaction, of the deposit transaction doesn't work. And I looked into this, so that's a, that's a difficult problem, but they're very important because we got uh, arbitration cases because of this and uh, too many at the end. Not terrible bad, but uh, those are, I said, those, the really big problems, the really big bugs, what we have in BISC are all super, super difficult first to, uh, to fix and second to test. Um, so I know I'm the uh, new guy, but I just wanted to give uh, my two cents. Um, so many years ago, I was uh, employed at Opera Software, uh, which is a Norwegian company making a web browser, uh, at least until they were um, bought out by the Chinese. But anyway, um, I was actually employed as a QA engineer uh, for testing the web browsers uh, when I first started my career there. And I think the biggest thing I took away from my uh, testing career uh, with the software is that obviously a web browser is probably the most complicated software application ever uh you know just ever um seconds maybe only the operating system itself but um the most productive use of testing in general was having a very um scripted uh test suite for an actual human to kind of run through like step one open the app step two you know uh go to this website step three click here and you should have an expected result and uh if the of course, if the actual result does not match the expected result, you file an issue and developers look into it. But um, how, do we have anyone who actually does yeah. like a full release test before we yeah. uh, Maybe release a new Dev version? Yeah, uh, Devin, I don't know if you can talk or, but if you can talk, maybe you jump in, otherwise I will give a little bit overview, but just interrupt me when you're available. Uh, Devin is uh, a yeah, professional tester. So he's is day job. Uh, I think now he's available. Maybe you take over, David, Devin. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, we do have a manual test suite uh, defined. Uh, we use a tool called um, Testpad. Uh, so we do we, we do have a uh, a wide selection of different uh, tests that test various features. Um, they're they're not very detailed at the moment, um, but we we do not uh, perform a, a full test every release, uh, and, and mainly it's 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 Christoph that is doing um, uh, any uh, final uh, testing uh, before publishing um, a release. <coughs> yeah, I think it's okay. actually an area where we would need more support because the basic idea was that every developer helps uh, at the release testing. And uh, yeah, to 
just to spread the workload. At the end, it was mostly Devin and Christoph doing the biggest chunk of the work. So it would be great if anybody could help uh, for the next release, because especially the next release, which contains the current master, will require full tests of everything, basically, because we touched so many different areas in the code. And uh, yeah. yeah. I think when um, before when when the next release build is ready before we release it, um, I'd really love to uh, sit down with Devin and kind of go through the uh, test suite and maybe uh, try and improve it with him to make it more, uh, you know, robust. But yeah, let's do the full release test together. That sounds uh, very productive, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds good. Okay, I'll go back to muting my microphone and just uh, watching the presentation. Well, okay. So uh, basically, we, we settled on, uh, we have different opinions. First, uh, uh, Christoph said when there is a bug, we should recreate the bug with a test and then fix the bug, uh, which is one way to, to up the, the test coverage. The second, um, uh, point uh, of Manfred has been, well, if there is something uh, really wrong, it often is because the, the environment is, is special, let's say, and uh, it's hard to, 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 to recreate the environment to actually reproduce the bug and then so that we can fix the bug and so have a test that uh, prevents the bug from happening again, and the third step has been a third uh, uh, point has been uh, from from Wes and and Devin. Uh, you have this human interaction where uh, the the script says, "Well, uh, open the app," and if you see, well, the app just opened, but there is nothing in it, and you say, "Well, open the issue," and say. I just opened the app and there's nothing in it. And it's not trivial to reproduce, uh, to create a, a automatic test that does exactly that. Um, so how, how, do we, uh, how do we get started with this? Yeah, I, as I didn't want to, uh, 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 to reject the idea. Of course, it's great when there is a bug and there should be then a test to cover the bug. Um, it, I just want to say that it's not always uh, possible or the costs for it are sometimes so high that that is not feasible because we don't have unlimited resources. We have actually very low resources. And basically I think we should just try everything and keep the goal in, in our mind that yeah, we want the, a solid software and we also need enough resources to implement the missing features like the new trade protocol. And we must not lose this out of sight uh, that this is actually the most important of all the bugs what we have, <laughs> that um, we have a big vulnerability with the current trade protocol and we need to fix this. So maybe uh, maybe there is, a, there, uh, there definitely is some uh, refactoring due. It has been due for quite a while. And maybe we can agree on, on uh, once uh, any of us uh, uh, takes up the task of refactoring any small piece of code or something like this, then it's it's uh, it's necessary to create at least feature functional tests, not on the two plus two equals three level, but uh, I put this uh, into the test and there should be some result and there should be no exception or something like this. Uh, at least before we, we attempt the refactoring stuff. Is, is this a way to go, you think, everyone? Well, I don't think we have, we won't have like the golden, uh, golden path. None is good, I think. We, or at least we can't afford some that could, uh, like, like Christoph suggested. Yeah, that, I think it would be really wonderful if we could, uh, I agree with Manfred that we, we can, uh, it's not easy and cheap to reproduce every single bug. It would be wonderful if we could uh, test or write tests for as many bugs as we uh, can find, but uh, we don't have resources. So I think that we could 
we have to prioritize on something. Uh, if we write some new functionality, if it's fe feasible to write good unit tests, because I think that the unit tests are doable. Integration tests will be hard because the code is tangled. Because it will. testing is about writing testable code. If the code is not testable, if it's not written with testing in mind, then it's like already too late or uh, the cost of refactoring might be too hard too high uh, but we and for sure we will run into such situations where uh, to have wonderful integration tests we would have to change really core uh, functionalities mm, that would span like i know 50 files so i don't we should uh, decide on individual cases probably yeah i think we shouldn't be too uh, too dogmatic here but rather pragmatic i mean we have all the same goal to improve the code quality and more get better test coverage and we just need to see case by case here it makes sense here it's maybe too expensive or here it's even nearly impossible and just to not lose the broader picture at, at the end i mean or, yeah and the and the reality that we are not when we are 20 people then we can put five people just for testing and building test uh, environments and whatever stuff but yeah we are not there and it's the same bitcoin when bitcoin started there was basically no tests as far as i know and it took them many many years and many many developers and now it's super well tested with all kind of tools around for simulating all kind of stuff like the network and so on but it took them years and many developers so we are not we are still not there and uh, we cannot try to achieve this and forget the other important stuff what we need to get done like the new trade protocol <laughs> so uh, we can agree on if there is some new feature and uh, introduced in a pull request and uh, we uh, it is feasible to to create at least some tests for this very feature uh, we should enforce that unit tests are there, or at least some tests are there for the new feature first. Second one is if we if we attempt some refactoring and testing is possible, we can create some integration tests so that we can uh, integrate. It's it's a well we we create some tests that we can uh, make sure at least to a certain degree that the code as it has been before. Uh, is the same uh, the functionality of the code as it has been for the uh, refactoring uh, works the same way as after the refactoring and uh, of course if there is some some uh, bug showing up and we can reproduce the uh, the the environment to to so that the bug occurs we can of course if there is not too much uh, resources needed for this we can create a, a test and then fix the bug and uh, leave the test in the in the code base to prevent the bug to resurface again so we can uh, at least uh, stock up the the testing coverage and but we of course will be never uh, on the on the golden side where everything is tested of course but uh, i think we can agree on 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 making it on a, a, a making it happen but not uh, let it slow down the development of, of bisc or the yeah yeah i agree and, and and in terms of testing if uh if it's too difficult or uh, infeasible to to automate the test then we could potentially just uh throw in a, a manual test that uh, that we need to run as as regression Yeah, yeah, but I think that it is very important that we start practicing the tests. Yeah, even a little test, but start getting this habit. Because otherwise we just can cancel the whole idea about testing and just go on with implementing new features. Yeah, and in, in, if, we, if we are honest, uh, if we are honest with ourselves, uh, Whenever we uh, wrote some some code and uh, it it hasn't been a, a very good feeling that we did not know if it actually worked in every case we can imagine because on the last com on the last commit someone commented on the pull request and said well this line would be better otherwise or something like this you do the change and you don't even think about 
doing the whole testing and thinking stuff again and then uh, bad things happen and, and that is uh, something we can uh, at least uh, uh, reduce if we, if we have the tests in place. Yes, okay. Time's up. Um, to summarize the whole thing, we, we uh, talked about the short-term strategy and getting a green light on end-to-end -end testing. Uh, it it uh, showed itself the situation. The situation is that it is, it, we knew that it is difficult, but uh, it might not be a short-term strategy at all because we don't have the tools. We cannot get it up and running. However, we will discuss it offline and see if we can get some uh, green or red light for integration testing uh, created. Uh, for the for the long term uh, strategy, uh, we settled on on, uh, on let's say doing it what 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 can be done and just uh, trying where it cannot be done and eventually we will get the test uh, coverage up and running so that uh, the BISC code is, gets more structural, gets maybe some refactorings uh, come with testing and everything uh, goes more fluid and more stable and at least the, the, the core, uh, let's say the, the basic functionality where there is no influence of, of uh, the environment of Bitcoin, of of the P2P network and so on, uh, we can rely on it so that there is no bug uh, in there. Um, and uh, yes, and uh, last but not least, as uh, Bernard said, we, we have to practice, we, we have to do the testing. Actually, we have to do it and we will see uh, where it gets us and that's basically it and that's what I wanted to hear. Um, so time is up. Are there any uh, other questions regarding this uh, topic? Okay, so uh, I thank you all for, for joining the car. Uh, let's do some testing and not just talking about it. And uh, as usual, uh, I will uh, uh, fill in the uh, agenda with the topics we, are, uh, we discussed and, and with the suggestions we got. Uh, there will be a, a recording available on, on YouTube uh, in a couple of hours, days, I don't know, uh, but there will be. And uh, please feel free to, um, to uh, um, let me see, to uh, raise suggestions what, uh, what further topics we have uh, we should discuss in 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 dev course in the in the topic collector um, uh, that's it and thank you for joining see you next time and um, maybe i may I add something um, so we have another the uh, the growth call i think in roughly one hour and it's i think uh, it's mainly about uh, attracting new developers and uh, yeah, making a little bit of uh, noise uh, that we need more developers and it would be great if other developers can join as well. And uh, also especially how we, how we handle the onboarding of new developers. When new developers joining Slack, there should be people who are getting engaged with them and uh, trying to get some direct conversation or whatever to give a little bit of overview because yeah, we are lacking on documentations and on written stuff that we can just point a new developer to. So anybody who has time is very welcome to join. I think it's uh, at 8.15 in uh, Central European time. Is this correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That was it. Thanks, everybody. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.